Hello everyone. Welcome to Civilians. Myself Jeeva. Today in this video I am going to discuss with you one of the most popular and oldest construction material the brick and the various types of brick bones. First of all let's see what are the dimensions of a brick. The standard size of a brick is 19 by 9 by 9 centimeter. After placing the mortar, which is the binding material, the size becomes 20 by 10 by 10 centimeter. And that is called as the nominal size of a brick. And on the top face of the brick, you can see that there is a small depression or cavity, which is popularly known as frog. And it is used for holding the mortar in place to increase the binding capacity and thereby strengthen the brick board. Now, let us see what is a stretcher and a header of a brick. The longest face of a brick, which is parallel to the direction of the brick, is known as a stretcher. And the short square face, which is perpendicular to the length of the brick, is known as a header. These headers and stretchers are used to create different kinds of brick posts. So, without any delay, let's see what are the different types of brick posts. The first brick bone we are going to study is the stretcher boat. It is also known as running boat. As you can see here, only stretchers are placed in every single course. A course means a single layer of bricks. So only stretchers are placed in every course of bricks. And in this type of bone, to avoid vertical joints, we are placing half brick bat in every alternate course. And normally this type of bones are used for construction of walls having half brick thickness. So this is a stretcher bone where only stretchers are placed and half brick bats are used for avoiding the formation of vertical joints. Next comes the header bone. So in this bone, only headers are placed in every course of bricks or in every single course. So here we can see that First, we place a layer of headers. Above that also, we are placing another layer of headers and so on. So, only headers are placed in every single course. And here also, we have to avoid the formation of vertical joints. To avoid the formation of vertical joints, here we are using a 3 by 4 brick bat in every alternate brick course. So that we can avoid vertical joints everywhere. And this type of bone is used for the construction of walls having one brick thickness. That is all about the header board. Now we are going to see about two major bones in brick masonry. English bone and Flemish bone. Usually we get to see a lot of questions from this portion in many of the competitive examinations. Let us find out what is the difference between an English bond and Flemish bond. An English bond is considered to be the strongest bond in brick masonry. And here we can see that it consists of alternate courses of headers and stretchers. That is, in one layer or in one brick course, we are placing stretchers only. Above that, we are placing another layer of headers. Above that, the layer of stretchers and so on. So it consists of alternate courses of stretchers and headers. And to avoid the formation of vertical joint, in every header course, we are placing a cune closer next to the coin header. So what is a coin header? The word coin means corner. So coin header means the corner header or the header which is placed at the corner. So to avoid the vertical joints, we are placing a cune closer next to the coin header 
in every header course so this is all about the english bond which is considered as the strongest bond and alternate courses of headers and stretches are used here next comes the flemish bond so there are two types of flemish bond a single flemish bond and a double flemish bond and usually flemish bond have an aesthetically attractive appearance and therefore it is popularly known as the beautiful bond let's see what is a flemish bond a flemish bond consists of alternate headers and stretches in each course so in every course of bricks or in every single layer of bricks you can find alternate headers and stretches and here to avoid the formation of vertical joints again we are facing queue closer next to the coin header similar to the english bond only whenever there is a coin header next to the coin header we are placing a queue closer that is the appearance of a flemish bond so in english bond we have placed alternate courses of headers and stretches but in flemish bond we are using alternate headers and stretches in every course of the brick and this has a better appearance compared to the english bond now let us see what is the single flemish bond so the speciality of a single flemish bond is the front elevation consists of flemish bond and the back elevation consists of english bond so basically it is a combination of flemish bond and english bond here also for avoiding vertical joints we are using the queue closer next to the coin headers and usually a single flemish bond is used if the brick wall thickness is more than 1 and 1/2 brick thickness that is the application of a single flemish bond now coming to the double flemish bond so in a double flemish bond the front elevation and back elevation consists of flemish bond itself and that's why the name double flemish bond and it is considered to be the most beautiful brick bond so now we know the difference for a single flemish bond front elevation is flemish bond and back elevation is english bond but for a double flemish bond both the front and back elevation consists of the flemish bonds itself and it is considered to be the most beautiful brick bond now let us talk about some of the special bonds in brick masonry first one is garden wall bond as the name indicates it is used for the construction of garden walls boundary walls or compound walls there are two types of garden wall bonds garden wall english bond and garden wall flemish bond let us first see what is a garden wall english bond so in a garden wall english bond as the name indicates alternate courses of headers and stretches are placed because we all know in english bond there are alternate courses of headers and stretches but there is a slight difference the header courses and stretcher courses are placed in a ratio of 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 5 which means one header course is followed by three stretcher courses about that or five stretcher courses about that here we can see that the bottom layer consists of header courses above that we have three layers of stretcher courses followed by a fourth layer of another header course we can also have one header layer followed by five layers of stretcher courses and a sixth layer of header courses hence we say that the header course and stretcher course are laid in a ratio of 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 5 here we can also find that the alternate stretcher courses starts with a coin header so this is all about the garden wall english bond in garden wall flemish bond so we all know that in flemish bond alternate headers and stretchers are placed in each course so let's see how this works so considering the bottom layer we can see that first of all we are placing a header next to that header we are placing 
a 3 by 4 pad. And next to the 3 by 4 pad, we are placing a header, which is followed by 3 stretches. So here also, we can follow a 1 is to 3 ratio or 1 is to 5 ratio. That is 1 header to 3 stretches or 1 header to 5 stretches. So in this particular Flemish bone, that is garden wall Flemish bone, we are placing a header. Next to that, we have a 3 by 4 bat and next to that, we have a header, which is followed by 3 or 5 stretches. So in this bone, the vertical joints are avoided by using the 3 by 4 bats. And garden wall Flemish bone is also known as scotch bone or Sussex bone. Now, in the garden wall Flemish bone, if we are using 1 is to 2 ratio instead of 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 5, then it is known as a monk bone. So, 1 is to 2 ratio means we are using 1 header to 2 stretcher ratio. So, if 1 is to 2 ratio is used for placing headers and stretchers, it is known as a monk bone. The next special bone we are going to discuss is the Dutch bone. So, the Dutch bone is basically a modification of the English bone. So, we know that in an English bone, alternate courses of headers and stretchers are placed. But the difference in Dutch bone is that every stretcher course starts with a 3 by 4 bat. Also, in alternate stretcher courses, next to the 3 by 4 bat, we are placing a header, that is a Dutch bone. So once again, so Dutch bone is basically a modification of English bone. So there will be alternate courses of headers and stretches. And every stretcher course starts with a 3 by 4 bat. And also in alternate stretcher courses, next to the 3 by 4 bat, we are placing a header, that is basically a Dutch bone. Now comes the English cross bone, which is popularly known as the St. Andrews bone. So this English cross bone is also a modification of English bone. Here also we have alternate courses of headers and stretches. So in the header course, next to the coin header, we are placing a cune closer to avoid the vertical joints. And there is another difference too. Alternate stretcher courses are provided with a header next to the coin stretcher. What is a coin stretcher? The corner stretcher is known as the coin stretcher. So next to the coin stretcher, a header is placed in alternate stretcher courses. So basically, a modification of English bone is an English cross bone. But the only difference is the header is or the header course starts with a coin header next to the coin header we are placing a cune closer and in alternate stretcher courses next to the coin stretcher we are placing a header course the next special brick bond is silver lock bone or brick on the edge bond so this particular bond is slightly different from all the other bones let us find out why so, in silver lock bone, or also known as the brick on edge bone, how we place the bricks are, the bed layer of bricks, that is the bottom layer of bricks, are headers only. That is, we are placing only headers on the bed layer. And above the bed layer, that is, above these headers, we place the stretchers on the edges only, on the edges of the headers only and this results in a continuous cavity between the stretches. So I shall repeat. So the bed layer of brick consists of headers only and above this layer of headers we are placing stretches on the edges only. That is the stretches are placed only on the edges of the header layer or the bottom layer. So this results in a continuous cavity between the stretches. 
Again, on top of that, we are placing a lot of headers. And on the top of the header layer, again, we are placing the stretchers on edges only. And that is why it is known as the brick on edge board. So in this case, this is a very economical board because we know that only a fewer number of stretchers are required. So this is an economical board, but it is weaker in strength. So we can use this or we can apply this type of board for the construction of partition walls or boundary walls, etc. Next comes the raking bond. So in raking bond, the bricks are laid at an angle or at any angle other than 0 and 90 degree. Or simply we can say that the bricks are laid in an inclined position. So that is the specialty of a breaking board. The bricks are laid at any angle other than 0 and 90 degree. And based on the inclination, we are dividing the raking bond into diagonal bond, herring bond bond and zigzag bond. Generally, the raking bond the diagonal bond or herring bone or the zigzag bone. All these types of raking bones are used for pavements and flooring constructions. Now let us see what is the difference between the diagonal herring bone and zigzag bone. So coming to the diagonal bond. So in a diagonal bond, first of all, two structure courses are placed on both sides of the bone. And perpendicular to the structure courses, a header course is placed and next to the coin header we are placing a cune closer in order to avoid vertical joints. So now we have two structure courses on both sides and perpendicular to that we have a header course. The bricks are laid at an inclination of 45 degree with the structure course. That is the peculiarity of a diagonal bone. The bricks are laid at an inclination of 45 degree with the stretcher course and this type of bond is used for construction which requires 2 to 4 brick thickness that is the application of the diagonal bond. Now coming to herring bond bond. So similar to the diagonal bond we have two stretcher courses on both sides and perpendicular to the stretcher courses we are placing a header course. Now the bricks are laid at an inclination of 45 degree with the center line in opposite directions. That is the difference. So in diagonal bond, we have placed the bricks at an inclination of 45 degree to the stretcher course. But in herring bone bond, we are placing the bricks at an inclination of 45 degree with the center line in opposite directions. And this type of bond is used for constructions which require more than 4 brick thickness. Also, we are placing a cune closer next to the coin header in order to avoid the vertical joints. Now coming to the last raking bond that is zigzag bond. So in a zigzag bond, the bricks are simply placed in a zigzag manner or a irregular fashion. That is all. We are not specifying any angle of inclination in this type of raking bond. And all these raking bonds are used in payments and flooring purposes. So the last brick bond we are going to discuss is the facing bond. So the facing bond is a special type of brick bond because the facing and backing of the brick bond is made with bricks of different sizes. The facing of the front side is made with brick size of 19 by 9 by 9 centimeter. And the backing or back side of the wall is made with brick of 19 by 9 by 4 centimeter. So we can conclude that the facing and backing of this brick wall is made with different size of bricks and usually adopted for thick wall construction. And another feature is that we can see here, one header course comes only after several stretcher courses. That is another feature of this facing board. So that's all about the different types of brick bones and their features. I hope this video was useful to all of you. Thanks for watching. Learn from the best.